All right, so now I'm going to talk about what I call upper structure chords. And really, it's just taking a lot of the concepts that we were doing already, but playing just the top strings, the, the high E, the B, and the G, and maybe a little bit of the D, but we're not going to be worrying about these bass notes anymore. And they really come in handy, and they're awesome when you're playing in a band because other instruments, typically, especially bass, are covering this lower register. So it's better not even to play it anyway so you're not uh, getting in their way and, and there's more space and it, and it just sounds better in an ensemble kind of setting. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, this, is the, the vibe that comes from this bar chord that we've been doing so much of. So if I took uh, an A major bar chord and like I said we want to forget about the low E and the A we're left with this which you can kind of think of as like an F chord. So I'm playing the 7 on the D, the 6 on the G, the 5 on the B, and the 5 on the high E. So that's an A major. Well, you know, you see guys like John Mayer, just one of a million examples. Everyone got it from Hendrix, but, you know, you got your thumb over the bass note if you want. But we're not even going to worry about that right now. We're just going to do this chord right here. Okay? And there's lots we can do. One, first thing I would say is you can hammer on that G string right there. So you have that barred, ring finger right there. Just that vibe that I was doing right there is I'm and this right here is muting the strings. So then you can squeeze down on it when you want. thing was what I just did was taking your ring finger and barring the G and the B and then hammering also go like this, bar that, then hit the seventh fret on the D, and then hammer that. tend to do is I tend, when I'm playing this F shape, I actually don't even play the D string. I play those, and then when I've got, I'll get my ring finger down, and then do that. So, so far, that's kind of just more or less a major chord, not necessarily a bluesy dominant chord, although it's implied a little bit. But now what we want to do is take the same upper structure 
chord that comes from that E shape. And I wanted to show you some cool things you can do. Uh, one, you can play it this way, where you put your ring finger a whole step up from the root. So if we're playing A major right now, like this, if we had our ring finger right there, then that is an A6. That note right there is called the 6. But then what you could also do is if you cover the 5th fret of the D string at the same time, now you have a really nice um, blues chord, and you could call it an A13. The only reason it's called A13 is if I climbed up the, the dominant scale, or also known as mixolydian, if I started at the root and went up 13 tones, it would end right there on that note, the 13. Let's test that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Hey, what do you know? There it is. And since I was talking about, you know, playing in a band or other musicians, I'm going to add a little bass line here in A. right there. Secret weapon chord, people. Secret weapon chord. Okay, now though, you can add this one instead, which gives you an A7, which is that eighth fret on the B string right there with this little cluster. Which comes from this full bar chord. So another thing, and this is something we did way earlier, hopefully you still remember, it was when I took the D7 chord and moved it up to an E7. We're going to do that now with that same A groove, and we're going to combine it with these other concepts.